Chaque semaine dans le Screen Parfait, nous analysons l'art de la mise en scène. Et cette fois, c'est l'activiste Greg Araki que nous sommes allés rencontrer. Depuis les années 80, ce réalisateur libère et traumatise le public en explorant les amours adolescentes à travers toutes les sexualités. Son nouveau film White Bird sort cette semaine, mais c'est ici, au Festival du cinéma américain de Deauville, que nous l'avons rencontré. The people that are really touched by your movie and that it really changes them in some way, it changes their life in somehow, um, uh, that as a filmmaker is all you can really ask for. Greg Araki cumule les casquettes de réalisateur, scénariste, monteur, producteur et directeur photo depuis plus de 20 ans. Ce cinéaste activiste a remporté la première Queer Palme à Cannes en 2010 pour l'explosif Kaboom, dans lequel, comme dans tous ses films, l'amour post-pubère se vit comme une inévitable apocalypse sur fond de musique métal et new wave. Araki dépeint les adolescents comme une génération qui ne va nulle part. Nowhere en anglais, un slogan punk qu'il s'est fait tatouer sur les mains. Il adapte aujourd'hui le roman de Laura Kachishk, un oiseau blanc dans le blizzard, encore un film sur l'adolescence, mais avec une réalisation moins punk qu'à son habitude. À 54 ans, se sentirait-il plus serein Mom Cat You okay Yeah. I'm fine. Why are you all dressed up What do you mean The DP and the designer and the costume designer and I, we all sort of sat down and planned out very much the way um, the palette of the movie visually what it was going to look like. And um, I, I saw a lot of it in that sort of um, those colors of autumn. I'm in my 50s now, so as an artist and as just a human being, I'm in a different place in my life, and um, I feel like that's one of the amazing things about being a filmmaker is, you know, I think I've made 12 movies now. I kind of lose, lose track, but each movie very much represents kind of where I'm at, and there's been a very clear evolution and a very clear progress, I think, at least for me personally. I think it's about 87, and I moved it to 88, 89, or 89, 90, so that it would sort of overlap the turn of the decade, particularly for the music, because I really wanted to be able to pay homage to um, all of these bands, like the Cocteau Twins and and uh, and The Cure and New Order and, and Depeche Mode and all these bands that were so important to me as I was sort of coming of age. Um, I really wanted that cat's coming of age story to sort of overlap my own a little bit more. Pour incarner cette histoire, les muses d'Araki sont Shailene Woodley et la française Eva Green. Several years before I ever, oh, five, six years ago, I saw her sitting across a room like this. I mean, she was over there giving an interview. I'm like, who is that? I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's Eva Green. It's just like she literally is just like I couldn't take my eyes off her, and that to me is really what. I look for is that, like, it, it's intangible. You know, the time when I was your age doesn't seem so far away to me. Well, you should probably look for my mom's cat. Phil, would you like to have dinner with us tonight? I'm making crab thermidor. Uh, sure. Dinner is at seven. Cool. Thanks, Mrs. Connor. I mean, I was very influenced by feminist film theory when I was in film school, and uh, my female characters do tend to be stronger and more assertive than the male characters. I was really into uh, screwball comedies for that reason, because the women characters were always, you know, like Catherine Hepburn and Bringing Up Baby, just these very strong, very independent characters, and the ma male characters were more 
uh, passive and more uh, reticent. The Green character, from a very young age, was sort of brought up with images of Jackie Onassis and Elizabeth Taylor and, you know, Kim Novak. And, you know, I mean, like all those perfect, you know, Grace Kelly, like those perfect women, you know, that were always perfect, you know, they always, and also that idea of women, beautiful women, that, um, that was one thing that Ava and I talked a lot about, is that idea of beautiful women who their whole identity is established um, by how men view them and by their beauty and that they are the woman. They, it was very clear in the book, too, that Eve is that character. She walks in the room and all the heads turn. You know, it's like, who is that? You know, like she's like a movie star. And so, and then as that woman begins to age and then her daughter is sort of stealing her beauty in a way, it's, it's a very powerful story and dynamic. No more for you. God, you're getting fatter by the hour. My mother always wanted me to be a sylph, all lithe and elegant like her. And when I hit puberty, my body changed seemingly overnight, the bulk melting off like I was a snowman in the sun. Only, instead of finally pleasing her, that somehow made her resent me even more. Do you love that boy? God, jeez, you scared me. How long have you been standing there? Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. As a filmmaker, you just kind of work in your own little world, you know, and you're just like years and years and years you work on this thing, and you, and you love it, and you get it, and you understand exactly what it means and, and what you want it to say, but you just sort of put it out there in the world and say, I hope somebody else gets it. Maybe not everybody's going to get it, but maybe somebody out there is going to get it. So it's really amazing when that happens and people say it really, really meant a lot to me because that really means a lot to me. Si White Bird marque le début d'une nouvelle ère artistique pour Greg Araki, il l'exerce toujours au service de femmes fortes et charismatiques, sa marque de fabrique. Mom, 